Welcome back guys. <clears throat> uh, today I thought I'd take a look at a distribution that I have looked at before but uh, I wanted to take another look at it because I had heard so many good things about it. Now uh, the distribution is uh, Linux Deepin and it's a little bit different than most Linux distributions in that they lock it down a little bit uh, they uh, try to discourage a lot of the really in-depth um, modifications and and tweaking that we sometimes like to do with our distributions and I can understand their reasons for it um, number one it is a very nice distribution out of the box Number two, they're trying to appeal to the average computer user or someone who is maybe making the switch from either Mac or Windows. And as you know, some, sometimes when you're learning your way around <clears throat> and you're trying, let's say you were a, a Windows user and you're trying to make a switch and you were able to install Linux Deepin uh, which is not hard to do it the installer is very nice very easy um, it prevents you from breaking the system so in other words you can play with this you can click on all kinds of things and it's very difficult to actually cause any damage which is good for the average user I found it a little bit um, stifling uh, only because for example, let's take a look at startup applications. Now, those of you who have seen my videos in the past know that I like to um, install Redshift, P-Sensor, Clipit, um, and I like those to start when I turn on the machine. Normally, within a uh, typical Linux distribution, you can find your startup programs add programs fairly easily and get things set up the way you want there really isn't any ability to do that within Linux Deepin you have to go in and modify your startup folder your, your files so let me show you what I'm talking about if we go into the file manager and I go to let's see uh, first of all you have to enable hidden files and then you need to go into your config folder right here okay so you're in your home folder config and then there's a folder called auto start now once you have a folder let's say you download clip it and you uh, you configure clip it when you start it up uh, you can go into the preferences and tell it to start so once you have one file in your startup or in your auto start folder it's pretty easy to modify that one file and create others so for example uh, l let me backtrack a little bit I'm gonna minimize that if we go into the the app launcher you can see that um, I see P sensor it's got the little launch symbol okay what you can do you can right click an application in here and add it to auto start in most cases in most cases so let's say I wanted to auto start pocket add to auto start now it will auto start but the problem that I had was that P sensor um, I had a little difficulty getting it to auto start and redshift even if you click add to auto start and there was a folder in there it was not picking up my location and so it would try to start and then it would go away 
so basically what I had to do is I had to go in and let's see where is okay so I had to go in and let's see if I open this well you have to open it with a um, text editor so let's say for example I have uh, I installed leafpad so if I pull up leafpad and I open let's see I want to go to home I need to show hidden files need to go into config and auto start so if I open up redshift you can see that I had to add my location information and I believe I did a video on that in the past showing how to do that basically it's your latitude and longitude for your location and then you set your parameters on your the color of the lighting for the screen uh, so when I say that it's easy to add and modify uh, if you are wanting to add a program to auto start and you're for some reason it's not it's not uh, operating the way you think that it should go into your auto start folder open it up and make sure the execution the command is correct and so all you need to do is modify uh, as needed in order to get your program to run I had to modify the execution line but once you know that it's pretty easy but again for the average user you really don't want them messing with this stuff because if they break it they will not know how to get it fixed and then what will happen is they'll get frustrated and go back to Windows so I understand the reason that they make it a little more difficult to make some modifications now in Deepin's uh, defense there's really no need to modify a whole lot because they uh, do a great job um, getting this all set up out of the box and so for example if you click on your control center everything you need is in here so you've got the boot menu system information remote assistance pretty much everything you need is in here so if you want to do some modifications it's pretty easy uh, the only thing you don't have a lot of control over is personalization now you can change your wallpaper and if you right click on the panel you can ha you have three different modes classic mode which is the way I like it and it's the way you see here it's got the system tray icons along the bottom and then you can add uh, applications to the dock just by going into your launcher right click send to dock and there it is so you can add applications to the launch panel very easily if you want to uh, have a different look I prefer this but if you want to have a different look all you need to do is right click click on efficient mode and it basically gives you um, the open windows and icons for the applications on your dock it leaves it, co it compresses everything so it leaves all your system tray icons here which that's fine also there's no I don't have an issue with that the other uh, option is fashion mode which is kind of like uh, um, a Mac it's got a standard dock below the applications that are running you see the little light and uh, but you lose the system tray uh, let's see yeah we I don't see any of the system tray icons so I prefer a classic mode gives me everything over here that I need um, so I've put this through its paces now 
I went through and set it up the way I like it um, and I didn't have any difficulties at all uh, I have used the music player I've used the video player um, I've done um, all the modifications and auto stop programs that I usually do and so uh, I really like it I think they've done a great job um, they keep it uh, so that the average user can't muck it up too easily uh, but they do give you the ability if you know what you're doing you, you do have the ability to make some changes and get it the way you want it I would not have a problem using this as an everyday operating system I would not have a problem at all I went through and I added multiple programs but I used the command line I went into the terminal and I used the command line um, there is a software now I did a there was about 600 megs of updates that I had to do here is the software store uh, I haven't really used it yet but it's very well designed uh, if you click on upgrade I upgraded system is up to date beautiful um, if I go back to home you've got categories for all of the available uh, applications and as you can see it's laid out in such a way that it's very very intuitive very easy to use the average computer user coming from Windows would have no difficulties at all getting comfortable with this system it's pretty self-explanatory so I've only added a few things uh, to uh, mail I, I added Geary mail I added GUVC view I added Kazam I added Redshift P sensor clip it uh, leaf pad just some of the things that I normally use and it's been fine now when I when I first started the store uh, it went through and did a speed check on the mirrors and told me that the closest or the fastest uh, mirror location was at James Madison University but when I did the update it stated on the screen that it was pulling the files from mainland China now this is a Chinese distribution it is open source it is Linux and I'm pretty sure that if there were there if there were any issues they would have surfaced by now um, somebody would have because it is open source somebody would have discovered something and reported it to the Linux community so uh, while I do have a little bit of concern uh, I'm not it wouldn't be to the point where I would not use it so overall I don't see any problems with uh, deepen it's in my opinion it has to go up into the top five for uh, distributions that I would have no qualms about recommending to anyone in my family or friends if they were making the switch from Windows or a Mac uh, it is that good so I hope you enjoyed the video guys um, again the distribution is Linux Deepin I downloaded it and installed it without any issues as a matter of fact when I went through the installer um, it just asked me what petition I wanted to install on and I had created an ext4 petition already so I just selected that drive and that petition and it did the rest everything was transparent everything was taken care of um, all I had to do was point out the, the petition that I wanted to use so I uh, hope you enjoyed it guys um, Linux Deepin terrific distribution I wouldn't have a problem using it as my daily driver although I am a dedicated Manjaro user uh, but Linux Deepin is super so guys please rate comment and subscribe um, thumb the videos up if you feel it was uh, worthwhile 
and um, I will see you soon, guys. Take care.